not too... Uh, let me get to that worksheet. Your lecture 34 35? 35. 34. Okay, okay, so... I got to say... So then the order would be first for OH. Okay, that makes sense. Because I vaguely remember Mr. Warner saying that if the concentration, like there's not two that are the same, you use something from the balanced equation. Um, I think you only use the balanced equation when it's, um, like, when there's two different steps. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, Mr. Warner. Yes. Um, is this going to be posted by the end of tonight? Uh, well, provided everything goes smoothly. The last time there was something all in the network with our net with I guess my home network that wasn't posting it very quickly. And it took uh, until the morning. Uh, but if everything goes smoothly, yes, it'll be posted tonight. Okay, because my aunt just got admitted to the ER, and my oh, parents no. wanted to go there. Okay. I can't stay. Anywhere. That's t I totally understand. That is absolutely fine. Okay, cool. I'm so um, sorry. It's okay. I don't really know what happened. Apparently, she was in a car accident. Okay. But yeah, um, if someone can message me if this gets up. Um, Absolutely, yeah, we'll keep you in our thoughts. I'm so sorry. That's right. Well, thanks. I just wanted to check in, so. Okay. All right. Good Bye, night. Chloe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, that happened now. That was kind of a bummer. Um, I totally forgot about, I don't have um, worksheets 34 and 35 with me. I'm trying to email some of the stuff to myself. Uh, I just did the practice test. So, um, but I'm open up to whatever questions you guys might have. No, no, no. It just something to know about the about the solution, okay. and just knowing that homogeneous means it's in the same state, and if it's heterogeneous, it's in a different state. Okay, thank you. Sure. So, Marina, you said multiple choice number two. Would that be multiple choice on uh, multiple choice three or multiple choice number one? I think. The first page. Okay. So let me see if I can share that. Uh, all right. Let's see if this is it. Is this the one? So it's the one with the NO2 plus CO goes to CO2, you have the CO2 plus NO. Is that the one we're looking at? I, I'm not sure. I think that's what she was talking about. Okay. Mine shows different. No, she's got a different one. Am I okay? Well. Oh wait, yeah, ours is different. It's uh, yeah. hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen. Oh, there it is. Okay. I think I have it now. All right. So a proposed mechanism for the reaction is outlined below. Uh, oh, we talked. I talked about this a little bit at the end of class. So um, you're wondering why it's A, why it's the hydrogen peroxide and the iodide. And what you'll notice, oh yeah, so the iodide right here, the I minus, is a reactant and then it's a product um, at the end, which means that it's a catalyst 
because it goes in um, on one side and comes out the other basically at the end. It's not a part of the overall reaction and it, um, and it still stays the same. So if it was an intermediate like IO minus, it was produced and consumed in the same set of reactions. Um, that's how we know it's an intermediate. It doesn't appear in the final equation. Um, I would say that uh, in this one, we normally don't think of catalysts as being a part of the the as part of the the rate law. Um, however, it can be if it is in the slow step of the mechanism. So it's the rate determining step. It's in there. That's the only way in which you can get a catalyst into the um, into the rate law. Just when it's in the slow step, in the rate determining step. So that's why it's A. Does that make sense? Oh, did you get did that disappear on you guys? Yeah. So sorry. Okay. Okay, and Marina, okay, you got it, Marina. So the I minus, that's the and I I normally don't think of it like that. It doesn't it doesn't pop up very often. Uh, it's probably I mean, you're going to have to do a rate law question on my test. I don't think, I don't believe a catalyst is a part of it, but um, it's something to know for the AP exam. All right, so other questions. Choice, it's on the fourth or the multiple choice four. Multiple choice four. Oh, do I have the wrong? I must have the wrong multiple choice. Well, it had, it had multiple choice three and it had multiple choice four. It's the next page. Oh, it did. Okay. I thought, um, never mind what I thought. Okay, let's try this again. All right, so it's kinetics number four. Uh, and you said it was number six. Let's just see if we've got the same doubling A and doubling B. Yes, that one. Okay, so, um, so doubling the concentration of A and doubling the concentration of B for a process that has a rate law of uh, rate is equal to a squared times b squared. So this, there's a couple of questions like this, I think, in there. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put this on the bamboo real quick. Uh, I think it'll be pretty, pretty straightforward once I show it to you. Oops. All right, so... Rate is equal to a squared times b squared. And so what, what's going to happen here is that if you, if you double them, then basically you've got 2a squared times 2b squared, which is 4a squared times for b squared, which is 16 
times a squared times b squared. Oh, okay. So they're just trying to be tricky with the math. Will that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right, Marina, multiple choice five on number on page two. It's not this one right here. The decomposition is that the one? Um, let me screen share that one. Is it? Um, no, it's the one with the graph. Oh, okay. So multiple choice kinetics three. Number five, right here. Oh, the changes in X, the concentration of X over time were measured for the above process and the results were plotted below. So we have concentration versus time. And uh, we have that reaction 2X plus Y yields Z. Which of the following statements is true according to the plotted results? Um, all right, so this is the funny thing about these reactions or these graphs. When you do a concentration versus time, if you get um, a, well, I can't really draw that, can I? Um, all right, I'll go back to the bamboo paper for a moment. All right. So, This was four, this was on three. Okay, so if we have a graph where we have concentration of X uh, over time, and if it goes straight down, that's gonna be the zero order. Hmm, I'm not writing very well. Okay. Uh, if we have one where we get a slight curve to it, concentration of X versus time, this is first order. And if you get concentration of X versus time and you end up getting a really big curve, you know, then that's going to be second order. Um, and it's one of those where you, um, you, what you should do is just be able to identify it by looking at it. I'm sure there's, you can do mathematically, but these are multiple choice. So it's not like you're going to take the natural log of X, you know, pick some, pick some, you're not going to, you can't really, I mean, I guess if you're good with the math and, and understanding how natural log of a number works, but I can't believe that expectation would happen that you would be picking up, picking points on here and taking natural log of those points, or that you might be doing slope of those lines and trying to figure that out. I, I don't think that's going to happen either. So you're going to, you're basically just looking at it and identifying it based upon um, how the curve looks. If it's a straight line, it's zero order. If it's Slightly curved is first order. If it's a big curve, it's second order. And that's the, that's the, I think, an easier way to identify it. Um, does that help a little bit? Okay. Yes, all right. And also, I would say that, um, same, uh, one more thing, Marina, and actually for all of you, really, for the test, more importantly than knowing that graph of concentration versus time is knowing which graph or, or which, um, for whatever order of the reaction you're looking at, which will produce a straight line graph. So um, natural log of concentration versus time for first order, that's the big one. One over concentration versus time for a second order and then concentration versus time for a first order. All right, so multiple choice number five on the last multiple choice page, how do you find the order? All right, so that one was this one. Okay, so um, the decomposition, oh, I better share that picture so we're all looking at the same thing. Okay, so what is the overall order of the reaction and what is the half-life for the decomposition? 
uh, knowing that the first order and the half-life. So the half-life being 24 hours, that or 12 hours, I'm sorry. You guys can figure that part out. And I think, Caitlin, you're not inferring that because you can easily tell that if half of it's left over, then it's 12 hours. So your only choices are D or E. Um, the If you look at it from, it's the same type of thing. If you make a graph based upon that, like, the amount of reactant that's present and the amount of reactant that's left and you and you made like a small curve. So let's see what would happen if I tried to plot that out. Um, okay. So let me go to a new page. And um, at some point you might be able to start eyeballing it, but if you looked at this, and this was 100, this is 50, so this is 75, this is 25, and across the bottom, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and at 0 it's 100, and at 4 it's here, at 8, it's somewhere in here for 62. At 12, it's 50. At 16, it's 38, so it's somewhere in here. Oops, stop that. At 20, it's somewhere right here. Wow, what am I doing? And then at 24, it's at 25. And if we connected those dots, you see that it has that slight curve to it. It's not a straight line. You could, you could do a... Um, rise of run or check slope or whatever between two lines and see if it's the same. But really, you just kind of do a quick graph and you look at, okay, there's, if it was second order, it would be decreasing quite a bit more rapidly. Um, zero order, it would be decreasing at the same rate each time. And this time you can see that it's it's got a slight curve to it. So that's how you would identify, especially on multiple choice when you don't have those calculators, you know, to, to be able to run those, um, was it natural log of a, or the K over 0.692 or whatever it is. There's obviously that's, that kind of stuff is not going to happen. So just a quick graph and that should work fine for you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Other questions. Oh, and I, I will say this too, uh, Caitlin and for everybody, the half-life, again, if it's in the multiple choice, a half-life question is going to be strictly here. Like we did for nuclear chem. Here's the sample. You just keep dividing the sample by two until you get to the amount that you need. Or um, if it's a time thing, you know, you you the number of times you have to divide to get to half the um, from the initial sample to the final sample, the number of times you have to divide by two. That's and that's the, and you you have the half life. You can multiply it by that number of times to get the total time. You guys remember how to do that with nuclear chem? Yeah. Kind of okay. So that's that's all that is. It's in kinetics, really. That is all that it is. Now, if they if it's in if it's in the free response, then they might ask you to do the other stuff with with the half life. Um, so you should know how to do that. Specifically, first order. They don't, usually don't have you do half life for zero or second order. Okay. Other questions. Are you talking about is it um, is it free response Roman numeral three? Yes. Okay, and then it'd be the process below. Okay, let me show that document then. Okay. Oh, so, it's not that one. The one with, it's on the page before that. I don't know how to explain it. Um, this kinetics for response one. On the oh, for response one. Okay. Let me see. I think I have that one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, 
Maybe I don't. Is it is it free response one? Yes. Roman numeral, of course. Okay, that is fine. I totally got my Roman numerals mixed up and sent myself the wrong Roman numerals. It is talking about um, activation energy and it has a graph. Okay. Oh! And it seems like that equation that you said we didn't need to know, but I'm not sure if we actually don't Right. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me pull up. Let me pull it up just to make sure. the B. The graph below can be used to find the activation energy Ea for a chemical reaction. Um, all right, so yeah, because they no longer provide the equation on the react on the on the equation sheet, I don't think they're going to ask for this. Um, or they could provide the equation for you, and then you have to be able to identify how it would look. Um, how it would look if it if you're going to make it linear. Okay. If that makes sense. Let me. Um, I apologize. I need just one second. Okay. Okay. Um, you, um, I'd like you to do it because I don't know how much time I want to spend on this. I, I mean, I want you to be able to do it. It's, it's, it's not that hard. Um, so I want you to be able to do it for the test on the just in case. What I'm gonna, what I'm getting for you guys is that because I don't have that that equation memorized, so I'm gonna write it down for you so you can take a look at it. But you'll be able to see it's actually, it's not too bad, and they'll probably give it to you because they're so nice in the linear form. So let me um, let me just pop it up on the on the screen share. Okay, so uh, this equation, uh, all right, the equation is natural log of K is equal to negative Ea over R, 1 over T, plus natural log of A. And so in that graph, they are, um, 
Let's see if I can find that. And of course, I have to put that one away. No. Here it is. So they wanted to know um, what the axis would be, and they gave you a graph that looked like this, right? And so they have one over t on the bottom, and you need to know what this one is. And and they want to say that if you can find the activation energy from the graph. So y equals m x plus b. And usually for the most part, you ignore this because this is a is about collision frequency. Um, and uh, it's just not, it's usually not something you have to find or, or they don't give it to you. It's not usually involved in calculations in any way. So because that's why you know that that's going to be natural log of k. And the slope is then negative Ea over R. R is the energy, the 8.31 joules uh, per mole Kelvin for these ones. Wait. So, okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So at that point, I think it should be fairly easy to, to figure out and just kind of play with a little bit. Okay, so we should kind of know how to recognize it, but we don't need to like memorize that equation or anything. Exactly, exactly. You do not, do not spend time trying to memorize that equation. It's not in your equation sheet. If they want you to use it, they're going to have to provide you with some of that information. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question, Marina. Uh, free response to a Roman numeral three and free response Roman three... A number three. Okay, so um, well, this is the one I have right now. So I'm just going to go with 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 the three three a three. Okay, three fair response three. 3A3. So explain how the graph could be used to calculate the instantaneous rate of appearance of the NOBR at t equals 30 minutes. Draw on the graph to help you with your explanation. Um, so what they're saying is you're just going to draw a line on the graph. Like you would just come up here. Um, you know that the NOBR is the one that's is increasing. So if equal moles of the NO and the BR2 are put in, which means that there will be zero moles of the NOBR, that's the one that's increasing. The product is increasing here. And the NO and the BR2, the BR2 is the shallower one, the NO is the steeper one because it has a Roman or it has a coefficient of two, so more of it is being used up. So then if you went to 30 minutes right here, you would draw a line right there on the graph. Um, and determine your rise over run to get to get what that rate is. The instantaneous rate at the very moment is always a, a tangent line on the graph. It doesn't happen very often that you're asked to do that, but that is what they're looking for. And on this one, you don't even have to do the calculation. You just have to explain how you would do it. So, um, so that's... 3A3. Does that make sense for 3A3? Yes, okay. Um, free response, and, and are we talking about the same, same, uh, no. We're not talking about the same paper, probably. A2. I think she was just, um, like, correcting herself to where it... Oh, I gotcha. Okay. I just got it. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Caitlin, you have very good intuition there. <laughs> okay. All right. Other questions? So if we're doing a rate law, mm -hmm. and the slow step is like a step with an intermediate. Do right. we like go back to the step before that and use like the not intermediate? Does that, does that make sense? 
I do. I understand what you're saying. If there is a, if there's an intermediate, if there's an intermediate in the slow step, then um, let's say it's just a two-step reaction, and the slow step is the second step, and an intermediate is in the slow step as a reactant. Yes, you have to go to the previous reaction. You have to go to the fast reaction, and and you have to do a substitution. The, 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 you end up doing sort of a, a reactants get kind of put in, like, what is that, that intermediate equal to on the reactant side? And then you have to substitute that in for the intermediate in this slow step to get the rate law. Okay. That's a, that's a tricky one. It doesn't happen frequently, but. Okay. Um, okay. Caitlin Solomon, is the test tomorrow similar to the practice test? There are, there are several pieces that are very similar. There are some pieces that are actually similar to the retake test. Um, but I would say that uh, you're applying the information a little bit differently than you did on the practice test. It's the same, it's the same information though. It's not like there's, there's there's not necessarily information on the test that's not in the practice test with the exception of there's more, if I told you guys in class, there's more on um, the catalysts. Not cat I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with, the, with, the, with the catalyst and reaction, um, how you increase the reaction rate. So catalyst and reaction rates. That's the only thing. Remember we talked about temperature and increasing surface area and increasing temperature and talking about collision frequency, those are the things that you need to spend some time, you know, studying and remembering. Uh, okay, free response 3B4. Why is, no, okay, okay, Caitlin. Um, th so 3B4. Why is nitrogen monoxide in the overall rate log? Okay, so for this one, if we go back up to the top, um, we have we have O3 and NO in the, oh, this is another one of those. Okay, so the O3 and the NO are in the slow step. They're reactants in the slow step. So you're gonna think, okay, I'm gonna put that in, but if I look at the overall reaction, there is no nitrogen monoxide in the overall reaction. Why is it in there? It just so happens that once again, nitrogen monoxide is a catalyst uh, because it is on the reactant side uh, in the first reaction and it's on the product side in the second reaction or final reaction. And so the, oh, you got it. Okay, I see it now. You got it. Good. Irritating, but <laughs> that's, that's why it that is. All right. B, oh, you guys should be able to identify the units for the rate constant when you do K. So like that number five, um, number five, uh, like the very next question after that one, Marina, it, it talks about rate constant. You need to know, um, you need to know what, you need to be able to figure out what the, the units are and for any rate law, what the units for K are. Uh, and Marina, back to the, oh, you want to know, does the re NO replace the O? No, the O is not, the oxygen all by itself is not in the rate law because it's in the fast step as a reactant, but it's not in the slow step as a reactant. It has to be in the slow step to be in the rate law. The slow step is always the rate determining step. It always gives you the rate law, the slow step only, not the fast step. And because oxygen is in the fast step and not in the slow step, as a reactant, it is not in the rate law. Okay. All right, other questions? Those are all yours, good. Um, I would suggest that you understand the basic 
procedure of how you use a colorimeter or spectrophotometer. Like, you know, you're using the cuvette. What were the steps? What were the things you need to do in doing that that are important? Um, that would be a, something I would suggest. Um, Oh, uh, what was the green? Oh, right. Don't have the... Yes, 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 yes. That's true. <laughs> Pretty funny. I don't know what else to tell you guys. Like, it's... I feel like it's... it's um, I feel like it's a very doable test. Um, I guess I've said that before, though. So, I don't know. I know you can do it. I know you guys, this is a good opportunity to get a, a decent grade. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, I'm going to be there tomorrow. We're, um, I'm going to be there extra early tomorrow uh, to get set up because we're giving, we're feeding our freshman soccer team waffles again. <laughs> so um, which you guys are more than welcome to have as well. But I, I probably won't be doing a lot of cooking while you're taking the test. Um, but if you guys want waffles at some point, you guys are welcome to have some too. Yes? Yes. <laughs> calculus Cookie Friday tomorrow too. It's, it's, uh, it's Calculus Cookie Friday. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. I made some really scary cookies today. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, CJ, you got a question. Uh, multiple choice, number three. Oh, Marina, you've got to go? Okay. Thanks, Marina. Come in tomorrow morning if you have any other questions. Um, all right. The multiple choice. Was it multiple choice one? So, CJ, it was... Uh, it's multiple choice three. And oh. Okay. Whoops. Um, there we go. All right. And uh, the doubling and tripling affects the zero order. So, number three. Oh, this is very similar to the other one we talked about. Uh, let me put it on the bamboo. So we have a rate law. This is number three, multiple choice. We have a rate law that says rate is equal to concentration of x to the zero power times the concentration of y squared. And suppose that x is doubled and y is tripled. So rate is equal to 2x to the zero 3y squared. And any number to the zero power becomes 1. And this is 9y squared. So the overall rate is increased by a factor of 9. If it's 0, it's always to the 1 power. Like you don't even have to include it in, uh, you don't even have to include it in the in the rate law. Okay, oh, CJ, you got it. Okay. Sounds bueno. Any other questions? Okay. It seems pretty straightforward, but I feel like I'm going to get the test tomorrow and be like, hmm. <laughs> I can understand that. Well, I think it was really nice that we had that extra day um, so that you guys could work on this, on these uh, multiple choice and free response, because I think it kind of got you guys thinking a little bit more and, and um, it, I think it'll be good. I think you guys will be good. 
And CJ just needs above a 50%, huh? <laughs> is, that, is that for your leaping off point for, for doing the retake? Or is that where you think you'll, you'll, you'll be doing good on, on the AP exam? Well, you guys will have a couple opportunities to bring your grades up here at the end. I don't know if you're really going to throw part two. Oh, that's good. Um, I think you guys will be... Uh, the grades are really... They really end up okay. The grades are actually okay right now, believe it or not. Like, the overall grades are, are pretty decent. So, hard to believe it true. Well, if you guys don't have any other questions, we should probably wrap this up, and I'll see if I can get this posted. Um... And then I will see you all tomorrow morning. Woo! Woo, yes. Woo! All right. Thanks, Mr. Warner. Oh, you're welcome. And make sure you guys get some sleep tonight, too. Very important. With sleep. Sleep. You can sleep when you're dead. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I still have an entire AP environmental outline to do. Oh, no. Okay, I'll probably do it during lunch tomorrow. Oh. oh wait, we have, wait, never mind. We have plus in your class tomorrow. Oh, right. yes, we do. Can we not? Plus <laughs> in your class tomorrow. Well, um, let's see how it goes with the test. And, you know, I, I don't want to wait too long to start the electrochem stuff. Right. Let's just see how it goes. I hate giving up a plus period. It's like this great opportunity to, to get some stuff done. But... What is there something happening after plus that you guys really need to get done or need to work on? I was just gonna procrastinate on my AP environmental outline. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no procrastination. We'll see. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. <laughs> Tuesday. It's Friday. It's Friday. This is true. Well, all right. Okay. Thanks uh, for morning. All right. You're welcome. Bye, guys.